very good morning to everyone and welcome to this session of bcat we were discussing from previous few lectures regarding different machine elements in engineering drawing that we are using in that series we are at the final lecture or final session of this unit today we are going to discuss about bearings gears and pipe joints so let me share the screen with you okay so i hope uh, this is visible to you now let us start the se se session with the discussion on bear so what is the basic function or primary function of a bearing why bearings are used so basic thing that we should understand is the bearing is used to transmit the loads first thing that you should understand is bearing is used to transmit load then second one is to reduce the friction between two parts it reduces the friction between two parts and it has a secondary role that it supports the shaft as well as it locates the shaft okay so basically we can classify the function as primary function and secondary function so in primary function we can say that the bearing is used to transmit the load as well as to reduce the friction between two parts or two components and in secondary loads or roles we can say that it is used to support the shaft as well as locate the shaft okay now see this is a basic representation of a ball bearing there are different types of bearings that we are going to discuss this type of bearing you generally have seen in your day to day life and this type of bearing is called as a ball bearing okay now you can see that a shaft is mounted in this bearing and this bearing and shaft set is uh, kept at different places on a machine or a component and where we can see that two types of loads are coming on this on this structure the first one is called as radial load which is coming radially in this case from upper side to downward side the axial load which is along the axis of the shaft which is called as axial load so there are two types of load generally a bearing has to go through okay and also where we can find some situations where these loads are combined like is it not like that uh, only radial load will come or only axial load will come okay so combined load will be there uh, which is radial plus axial or some thrust or other types of loads are there so these are called as combined load so basic structure of bearing the shaft two types of load combined load that we have to keep in mind now just i have shown you the ball type of bearing ball bearing we call it as now there are different types of rolling elements that are used in a bearing so when we use a spherical steel ball or other material ball it is called as a ball bearing okay now this is a sphere as you can see see here then there is another type which is spherical roller type actually it is a elongated type of thing and which has some curves at the ends and middle portion is somehow bigger than the end portions then which is also called as symmetrical spherical roll okay and this one is not it is called as asymmetrical spherical roller now why this is called as asymmetrical because uh, you can see if you draw an line or axis in this direction here 
you can see that the right side has a major diameter and the left side has a minor diameter. That is why it is not a symmetrical one. Okay. But it is elongated also. And that is why spherical roller asymmetrical is the name it has. And this one here, you can see that this is a cylindrical roller, just a simple cylinder of uh, more diameter or more thickness compared to this next type, which is a needle type of, okay. Both are having the same constitution like a cylinder, but the diameter of these two rollers uh, differentiate them as cylindrical roller and needle roller, okay. Now, you can see that the diameter of the needle one is very less, whereas the diameter of the cylindrical one is comparatively more. Then there is a taper roller. As you can see, observe here, the taper roller and a symmetrical spherical roller are somehow same. But you can observe that the middle portion is not a straight line in a spherical roller. Whereas in taper roller, the middle portion is a straight line, gradual increase or decrease, okay? That is why it is called as a taper roller, okay? So these are the basic types of rolling elements that are used in a bearings. Let us see the different basic components and how this assembly of bearings are carried out. At this left side, you can see that this is a complete uh, assembled view of a ball bearing, okay? This is one type of ball bearing, which is called as deep groove ball bearing. And in this, these are the different parts. So what are these parts? You can start with the seal part. The seal part, the green part is a seal, which is provided at this side and this side. Both the side of this ball bearing, we have to provide the seal into that, there is a curve section you can see over here where we have to put these rolling elements. As we have seen different types of rolling elements are there. Out of that, we are using ball bearing rolling element, okay? So these balls are placed over here, but sometimes these, are, these balls can get displaced from their space or location. So we have to provide a cage. So into this cage, we have to put or insert these balls and this cage and ball assembly or rolling element assembly has to put over here. Then after that, we have to put the internal part that is inner ring, okay, which supports the inner part of this ball bearing. This inner part or inner ring is provided here like this. And then the final seal from this side has to be put. Now, this is how the bearing is generally assembled. And these are the different components of a bearing. Next, when we compare the ball bearings with the roller bearing, we have two types of classification. The first one is called as point contact. As you can see over here, the point contact, because when a spherical ball is used, it is called as point contact because only the point at the circle is in connection with the surface, okay? Now, what are the characteristics of this point contact type of bearing is the less area of contact because only point is going to be contacted, it is less area of contact. There will be less friction. There will be more speed. In the application where speed is of very much of importance, we have to use this type of bearing. But there is a problem or issue, we can say that it takes a less load. So whenever it is required to uh, that uh, we have less load, but we require more speed, so in that case, we can go for point contact, that is ball bearing type of bearing, okay? Then in next type, it is called as line contact. These are called as roller bearing. 
okay when a roller bearing is used there is a line of contact between the this this element and the surfaces okay and in that case what we get we get more area of contact now when the area of contact is increased we get more friction and in this case we uh, we can obtain less speed as compared to the ball bearing type okay but the most uh, effective or most important thing is that it takes more load as compared to the point contact type of bearings this is why uh, in the case where there is more load is to be utilized or the application is like having more load in that case we can go for this line contact type of thing okay now let us see these different types ball bearing different types are there roller bearing different types are there okay so let me just so second so this is called as first type of ball bearing which is called as deep groove ball bearing as we have seen the diagram over here this is a deep groove ball bearing okay this is the type first type deep groove ball bearing and this one is a angular contact ball bearing you can see the cross section here the cross section shows that this is a angular contact so here some part of this uh, bearing and some part of this inner uh, circle or inner core has some improved or projected thickness which makes the bearing fit into that hole or location and the third one is called as self aligning ball bearing these are self aligning this can uh, have a rotation onto their perpendicular axis like here you can see that these are coming outside and inside then roller bearing of different types that we have discussed cylindrical type this is one the cylindrical type of uh, rollers are used in this part instead of ball then there is taper one that we have seen taper type of things are used now here this is just a representation because you can see here taper or cylindrical roller are of very less size this is these uh, components are just kept there to show you how this looks okay now this is why uh, we are looking at this and this one is a spherical roller bearing this is a difference or different types of roller bearing and ball bearings just we have seen this thing now let us move to the next part that is gear now see gears are used to transmit the power from one shaft to another shaft that we have discussed and power transmission is the movement of energy we can say that we have to move energy from one place to another place that is called as power transmission in that case the gear is going to use uh, used or they are going to help us now a gear is a component within a transmission device that transmits rotational force to another gear or device so the rotational force has to be given to another location okay in that case we have to use gear now only gear can transmit power or energy no only gear cannot do this alone gear cannot do this okay we have to use a transmission device there will be a assembly there will be assembly of gears and shafts okay then only it is possible so we have to use this gear in association with other parts of the or other machine elements okay the first type of gear is called as spur gear 
you can see this diagram over here this is called as per gear this is the center line or axis of gear these are the teeth as you know about spur gear these are the teeth which are parallel to the spur uh, gear axis okay now here in this second diagram you can see that the first one a is rotating anti clockwise which is called as driver gear and the second one is called as driven gear because due to movement of this a these teeth are getting engaged with the teeth of b and these are getting moved or rotated in clockwise direction so the gear which is transmitting the power is called as driver whereas the gear which is getting the power is called as driven driver gear and driven gear so the teeth in the spur gear are of parallel to the axis of rotation that we have seen this transmit power from one shaft to another parallel shaft the thing is that in case of spur gear you have to use the shaft should be parallel to each other and these are having very numerous numerous type of application like electric screw drivers oscillating sprinklers wind up alarm clock washing machine dryers everywhere we can use that this is a standard type of gear then there is a slight configurational feature added or some innovation made and we have seen that there is a internal spur gear type of things has been evolved this is a external type of where two gears are externally connected and this is called as internal spur gear where two gears are one gear is internally connected and one gear is externally connected okay so this is how the internal and external spur gears are look like then there is a helical gear this type of gears are called as helical gear you can see there is a there are teeth which are not parallel to the axis of the gear they are having some inclination okay the teeth or helical gears are cut at an angle to the face of the gear as we have seen here this gradual engagement makes helical gears operate much more smoothly and quietly than spur gear so the main advantage of helical gear over spur gear is that the operation will be smooth and it will be a quiet there will be no uh, sound like spur gear okay one interesting thing about helical gear is that if the angle of the gear teeth are correct they can be mounted on perpendicular shaft jasa perpendicular shaft asta like that we can use helical gear instead we use bevel gear if you remember if you have seen these type of things if you want to join two shafts which are 90 degree to each other we generally use bevel gear okay but if helical gears are uh, manufactured like that uh, with the with the manufactured with uh, care and the angles are taken care of then this can also be used in a 90 degree shafts so this is a helical gear the third type is herring bone gear okay now you can see this diagram over picture over here these gears are having two types of gears helical gears are combined together okay one is say clockwise one is say anti clockwise okay now where these types of gears are used to avoid axial thrust when there is axial thrust are coming two helical gears of opposite hand that is right hand and left hand okay can be mounted side by side manje we can mount these gears side by side like was here and which results in cancelling the thrust this can cancel the thrust so these types of gears are mostly used on heavy machinery in the case of heavy machines these type of gears are very widely used the next one is a rack and pinion the rack and pinion gears are used to convert rotation 
into linear motion whenever this thing or this pinion will rotate this rack will get move from left to right or to and fro the perfect example of this is the steering system steering in the car in some cases <coughs> this rack and pinion system or assembly is used so whenever this part pinion is going to rotate along with that this rack is going to move from left to right to and fro whatever you call this is called as rack and pinion and then there is straight and spiral bevel gear these are called as bevel gears as i have told earlier whenever there are two shafts 90 degree to each other we can opt for either bevel gear or helical gear okay so helical gear when aligned with a certain angle they are called as spiral type okay spiral gears and this is a straight type of bevel gear so basic thing is that uh, this is a type of one type of triangular shape at the end we are forming and these triangles are coinciding with each other at an axis or at a point okay so these are called as straight and spiral bevel gears then there is worm and worm gear this is the worm and worm gear assembly as you can see over here what does it uh, where does it used worm gears are used when large gear reductions are needed when we have to reduce the rotation on the large scale like 20 s to 1 300 s to 1 or even get greater okay so in that case we have to use worm and worm gear many worm gears have an interest interesting property that no other gear set has the worm can easily turn the gear the worm can this is the worm and this is the gear the worm can easily turn the gear but the gear cannot easily turn the turn the worm this is the interesting fact these are widely used in material handling and transportation machineries machine tools automobiles etc okay and the last thing that we need to discuss is the pipe fittings there are different types of pipes uh, different materials pipes used in mechanical engineering like uh, steel and various other copper materials plastic pvc materials are used so we should know how we can use these type of fittings to accommodate different uh, requirements of the customers or wherever you are serving okay so pipe fittings let us start the first type of pipe fitting that you have uh, must have seen these type of pipe fittings okay these are called as elbows this is called as elbow now these are having two different angles one is 90 degree here as you can see 90 degree and one is 45 degree so one pipe is joining from here second pipe pipe is joining from here and the angle between the two pipes will be 45 degree in some case in some cases it will be 90 degree now why this sweep has been provided this part this angular part is provided because there will be a discharge of a liquid of air whatever the fluid you are going to use in the pipe that fluid has to be discharged from one pipe and given to the another pipe okay now we are making the discharge have some angle now in that case if you take direct like a, a shape like direct perpendicular shape what will happen there is a turbulence created at the end of this part and this turbulence Uh, may cause the wear and tear of this uh, joint as well as the transmission efficiency like when we transfer this fluid from one pipe to another pipe this efficiency get affected that is why we have to use this sweep so this sweep angle if it is 90 degree then we cannot go beyond 
beyond 90 degree in some cases it depends on the viscosity and other properties of the fluid that we are transferring so generally we don't go below this uh, 90 degree uh, sorry you don't go below the 45 degree of this uh, pipe joint and these are called as elbow joints second type of uh, elbow is the street elbow as you can see here this is the type of elbow that we are discussing, elbow joints or elbow pipe fitting. In this case, you can see that these are called as street elbows. The one end is having an external thread. The one end is having an external thread. Whereas the second end is having an internal thread. This is called a street elbow. Okay. In this case, in the basic or standard elbow we are having all the threads that the pipe has to be fitted in that elbow now so that is why we have to provide uh, these threads in that so when we are having simple elbows we are having both the ends with internal threads okay so in case of pvc there will be no thread sometimes you have to use uh, interference fit over there okay sometimes uh, different type of uh, materials are used okay so in street elbow you can see that or observe that the one end is having internal threads whereas the other end is having external thread okay this is the basic difference between these two elbows standard elbow and street elbow then there is a t or t fitting t double e or t fitting it is called as t fitting Okay, now you can see that this looks like a T shape, T alphabet. That is why it is called as T. Now, this type of uh, joints or fittings are used where we have to take a branch out of the pipe. So, suppose from left to right, we have to transfer some fluid. It is going to left to right. But some amount, sometimes it is required to uh, transfer the liquid from another branch for other process or other applications okay so in that case we have to use this type of t joints okay then there is coupling okay this is used to join two straight pieces of pipe of the same diameter when you have just like we have used couplings to join the shaft right so similarly we are using these straight pieces of pipes are joined by using couplings. These are called as pipe couplings. Okay. So in here, in this section, as you can see in the screen, if you want to join two pipes, you can use a coupler over there. And this coupler is having the internal thread, as you can see over here. Sometimes it is used with the press fit. Okay. Then there is a reducer when we want to join two pipes of different diameters. In that case, we have to use the reducer. So here you can see that the other end is having maximum more diameter and the second part is having less diameter. So these are called as reducers. Okay. Then there is a bushing. Now the bushing is used to make the diameter of pipe fitting smaller. Whenever there is a diameter of pipe and it has to be used uh, for, say, another pipe has to be joined, but the diameter of that pipe is less, okay? And in that case, we can use the bushing. They differ from reducers. Reducers are different in that they make abrupt changes in diameter and take very little space as compared to reducer. Just now we have seen this is a reducer. And bushing is different. Bushing has to be fit into the pipe and then other pipe has to be joined. But reducer is also same. But the basic difference is it make uh, it, this, this uh, bushing takes very less space as compared to the reducers. Okay. And there is a union joint or unit fittings or unions we can call as. 
these are used to join the pieces of pipe where pipes cannot be turned or when a piece of equipment may have to be removed for maintenance or replacement so in the case where we cannot uh, use or the pipes that we are handling cannot be turned means that we cannot have the uh, movement of that pipe or when we have to use uh, we have to do some maintenance or some replacement activity in that case we have to use the unions or union joints right then there is a cap now caps are used to close the end of a dead end of the pipe now generally whenever there is a dead end and we have to stop the flow at that end we have to use different types of caps that is this is very easy to understand and same type of thing is plug uh, the plug can be uh, reduced or used clockwise anti clockwise having thread and we can frequently change or whenever there is a requirement of frequently uh, having that end to be opened or closed in that case you have to use the plugs so the plug closes and opening on a pipe fitting normally used for inspection and clean out so the two things in that case inspection and clean out we can go for plugs otherwise we can go for caps so these are the various things that we have discussed today and this is the end of our unit number 2 and depending upon this we will be having uh, our mid semester examination and if you have any questions you can ask me over mobile phone or email or whatsapp and this is the end of section or unit number 2 let me stop the sharing